Well, God bless you and kingdom blessings. Apostle coming at you. We know that you have been blessed by these awesome teachings of Pastor Ray Beatty, the future pastor of Valley Kingdom Ministries International. Why are we exposing him? Because it's all part of the process that we want you, the family, but also the community here in Chicago and elsewhere to see and to hear what an anointed vessel that is coming to the valley. Well, stay tuned, fasten your seatbelts, because I know you're getting ready to hear another anointed word. Thank you. Say thank you get the glory. 
the glory, Lord. You get the glory, Lord. You get the glory. You get the praise. Say you get the glory, Lord. You get the glory, Lord. Why don't you pray us in as we tag team today on this incredible word that God has downloaded to both of us. Absolutely, Pastor. Yeah. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for giving us this opportunity and this chance to share this word. Father, in the name of Jesus, Pastor Betty and I have marinated over it. We've seasoned it with the spirit. Lord God, we got blessed while we were cooking it. Let the people be blessed while they eat it. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. We can have what it says we can have. We can do what it, we say it can do. Lord God, we thank you for the purposes of God, our birth through the word of God. You said heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall last forever. So, Father, give us the anointing that makes preaching easy. Yes. Lord God, under the weight of your glory, sit us down and let your Holy Spirit speak through us. Help us to keep our opinion to ourselves mm -hmm. and preach your word today. In the mighty and master's name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Team. And uh, there is a word from the Lord. I am the chosen one. Type it in the chat right now. I am the chosen, chosen one. one. Yes. Pastor Craig, do you got it? I got if it. you got it, say I got it. I got it. <laughs> Let's read it. Let's go ahead and read. Afterward, hmm. Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city near the sheep gate was the pool of Bethesda. It had five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him, he knew he had been ill for a long time. He asked him, would you like to get well? Mm -hmm. He said, I can't, sir. The sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, stand up. I feel like standing up on that. When Jesus talked, <laughs> stand up, pick up your mat and walk. walk. Say this with me, Pastor Baby. Say instantly. Instantly. The man was healed. Mm. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath. So the Jewish leaders objected. And said to the man who was cured, you cannot work on the Sabbath. The law doesn't allow you to carry that sleeping mat. <laughs> this is my favorite scripture. Yes, yeah, right here. But he replied. The man. The man <laughs> who healed me told me, pick up your mat and, and walk. walk. Woo. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. 
May the written word inspire and ignite all who agree. Say amen. Amen. And hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's hold it up, Pastor Greg. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Not a doubter. Not a doubter. I'm the head. I'm the head. Not the tail. Not the tail. I'm above. I'm above. Not beneath. Not beneath. I can have. I can have. What it says I can have. What it says I can have. I can do. I can do. What it says I can do. What it says I can do. And I am. I am. The chosen one. The chosen one. Type it in the chat one more time. Type it. Type it. I'm the chosen one. I am. The Chosen One. Talk to us, Pastor Craig. Let's go. Come on, y'all. In this particular chapter, John gives us a historical account of the life of Jesus. But this book is more than a history lesson. And you know, I love to teach history. But it's, it's, important. It's, it's, it's a powerful argument of the fact that Jesus was and is the very heaven-sent Son of God and the only source of eternal life. Let me take you through the Gospels for a moment. Matthew presents Jesus as the Messiah. And the animal he's represented is the lion. Mark represents Jesus as this perfect servant. And the ox, the ox that treadeth out the corn. And then Luke presents him as the perfect man. But John, watch this y'all. John presents him as God. He is God and the eagle. So there are seven miracles. Watch this. Seven miracles in the book of John. Turning the water to wine at Cana, chapter 2. Healing of the official son in Capernaum, chapter 4. Healing the invalid at the pool of Bethesda in Jerusalem, chapter 5. Feeding of the 5,000 near the Sea of Galilee, chapter 6. Walking the water of the Sea of Galilee, chapter 6. Healing the blind man in Jerusalem, chapter 9. And raising the dead son of raising Lazarus from the dead in Bethany, chapter eleven. Pastor Craig, come on now. But it ends new beginnings. Come on, new beginnings. It ends. This book closes with an eighth miracle. Eighth miracle. Somebody type type it in. Say an eighth miracle occurred. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What was it? I'm glad you asked. The resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. That was a miracle. A miracle. And guess who experienced that? John, here in this particular passage of scripture, John actually has experienced this miracle. Yes, Matter sir. of fact, Pastor John, Pastor Craig, I'll call you Pastor John. <laughs> Pastor Craig, uh, Matthew and Mark did not get to experience this. Correct. But Luke. And John, they did experience this. Correct. And, and, and you've said something years ago, and I've, I've held this with me. Mm -hmm. I hear you say it all the time. I'm still it. I'm going to give you credit. The first time. Come on now. You've said a man with an experience, oh, my God, is never at the mercy of a man with an opinion. <laughs> Let me say that one more time. A man with an experience. Let me look over here right here. A man with an experience is never at the mercy of a man with an opinion. There's a lot of people that had an opinion about what happened with Jesus. Oh, there's a lot of people that had a thought about what could have possibly happened that night. But, oh, I'm telling y'all, John was going back to that. He went back to that. Uh, if you can just show that tomb. He went back to that tomb, and, and, and he went back to that tomb, and he know they had put him there, Pastor Craig. He yes, know sir. that he, he was carried in that tomb, and mm -hmm. he was dead, and for three days he was gone. But then he came back, and his experience, experience was that he's gone. Oh, so he had an experience of Jesus rising from the dead. Um, let me say one more time. A man with an experience is never at the mercy of a man with an opinion. A lot of people got opinion about who they feel the greatest is between Michael Jordan and Kobe, I mean, Mike, Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Kobe Bryant may be close, but they all saying right now LeBron James is the man. LeBron James may be the man. So as you see on the screen, you got Mike looking at LeBron and LeBron looking at Mike. And they looking like, you who think they the best right now? But see, some of us have experienced, help me Holy Ghost. Come on now. Some of us have experienced both men in their prime. We saw right. both of them. See, the young generation right now, they are flipping and going crazy over LeBron, Preach who is Pastor a phenomenal baby. player. Player. Yes. It's incredible. I've experienced LeBron, but I've also experienced Hallelujah. Michael Jordan. I've experienced, and some of y'all may say, well, I experienced them too on YouTube. YouTube can't give you what really happened. You can only see some things on the tube that, that, that you think happened, but we were in those moments. We know what the city was going through. We know what the city, we know what the culture was like. That's, That's right. right. John knew what the culture was like when Jesus was raised out of that preach, tomb. Man. Come preach, on, somebody. Preach. And because of he, him having that experience, nobody can take away from him 
what he knows. What am I trying to tell you today? You've seen God do some things in Hallelujah. your life. You've seen God make a way. You've seen him open doors that you know were closed doors. So make sure that you never let anything or anybody make you doubt what you already know. You know he's a way maker. You know he's a promise keeper. You know he's a burden bearer. You know he's a man of his word and he's a man that he would never lie. So make sure you choose him. People, people say, well, why come we don't see miracles anymore? Why, can't, why, why don't we see the miracles that happened years ago? What happened? And, and, and I just want to give you what I'm thinking has happened. Mm -hmm. Our faith has started to fail. Right. I, 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 I saw things back in the day, and I talked about this in Bible study. We talked about this with, with the, uh, the panel discussion that we did with Pastor Kirby John, that, that we saw miracles happen at 14 years old. That was in the early 80s. We saw legs grow. Come on, we saw eyes pop. We saw ears pop. We saw some things to let us know. We experienced some things to let us know who he was to us. Yes. I believe that not only are miracles uh, not happening because technology has dimmed our testimony. Jesus, say it again. Technology has dimmed our testimony. Technology has replaced us where we don't give God time. We, don't, we don't give him, a, we, we're, we're iPad, yeah. iPhone, and even Android got an eye in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> we're so focused on us that we can't be focused on God. Jesus. But in languages, in other countries where God, uh, we don't, they don't have technology, but they got to trust God for just eating every morning. Jesus. Miracles are still happening because God is not coming to them. My God, my God, my God. God is not coming to them. He is still Jehovah Jireh. Yes. He is still Jehovah Shema. He is still Jehovah T Sick Canoe. He is still Jehovah Sabaoth. Because we got technology, we don't all have testimony. Jesus. And I believe that's getting in the way. So Pastor Caldwell said something. During his first week of miracles, I want to re repeat, because listen, you, many of us didn't hear it the first time, so let me say it one more time. The purpose of a miracle, watch this, a purpose of a miracle is to strengthen, to produce, mm -hmm. to proclaim. Yes, sir. Everybody say that with me. The purpose of a miracle, sign and wonder, is to strengthen. To strengthen. To produce. Produce. And proclaim. And proclaim. What does strengthen mean? Strengthen... We got to strengthen the faith of believers on how many people need strength right now. Listen, yeah. this is what I heard while we was getting ready, Pastor Beatty. Some of us, we want strength to do, but God want to give us strength to resist. <laughs> because what's attacking us, we got to resist the devil in the fleet. And we, he, we need to be manifesting miracles because God says he's going to give you strength in this season. Come on. And then we got to produce. Yes, sir. Oh, I love that LeBron and I love that Jordan <laughs> <laughs> analogy because we see him produce. Yes. Listen, let me tell you something. I, I love LeBron, but when, when, when you sometimes when you get into the finals, a real production means I don't lose in the finals. <laughs> Because we're at the end of the road. <laughs> there is no games after this. This is the end, and there's no loss. So the reason why a lot of Christians are not being taken seriously is because we're not prolifically producing, the, reproducing the kingdom of heaven on earth, mm. reproducing the power of God in healing. It's like a Marvel comic book. They only read it in the pages of the Bible, but they don't Jesus. see it on our job. Jesus. They don't see it in our homes. So now the miracles, we got to start producing, and then we got to proclaim. Hallelujah. We got to say... Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We got to confirm that God is our Father. Hallelujah. And we got to get an operational definition of miracles. Come on, come on. Talk. Come on, y'all. Watch this. Write this down. Miracles occur <laughs> when God interrupts the normal or natural process with his supernatural power in order for him to get the glory. <laughs> You know we're going to exegete that. Yes. <laughs> when God interrupts the normal, natural process with his supernatural power in order for him to get the glory. Can I, can I give somebody else's testimony? Come on, man. <laughs> Pastor Betty came down here in, two, in 2005, 16 years ago. His son got cancer, a natural occurrence. Come on. 
God intervened in that thing and healed J. Ma from cancer. Miracle. <laughs> Nobody else could do it. The doctor couldn't do it. Hallelujah. They couldn't, the natural remedies couldn't do it. But the Lord God Almighty reached into John's leg and removed the cancer. And now he's crossing people up, uh, dropping down, and have a, a vibrant, loving life because he was healed by a miracle. Hallelujah. And that leads me to my next point. And Pastor mm. Baby's going to get in on this yeah. one. Yeah. Miracles occur. Watch this. Miracles occur when, when God inserts heavenly variables into earthly equations. Oh, my Lord. First of all, the first four words of this, miracles, mi miracles occur when God. <laughs> Man, listen, sometimes we go too fast, don't we? <laughs> yeah, just, just, just let's marinate on those four words. Miracles occur when God. Yes. Woo! Miracles don't occur when man does something, miracles don't occur when you have a when you have the remedy, when you have the solution. But miracles only occur when, when, God, when God inserts heavenly variables into earthly equations. Oh my God! There are some things, and in, uh, in other words, there are some things that come that come from the supernatural realm that can only come from the supernatural realm that can put itself into earthly equations and. The result ends up being a miracle that glorifies God. Y'all yes, know the situation. You were looking for a house and you didn't have enough down payment money. Your credit was jacked, but the Lord told you that was your house and you went and put a bid on it anyway. They told you you had it, but you need a certain amount of money to put money down for it. Even though your credit was jacked up, the Lord brought you through the first phase. But then the second phase, you got to have the money to put down for the house. You didn't have no money, but all of a sudden, oh my God, God came down heavenly fog. Uh, heavenly equations came down to, to, to the earth and God ends up supplying all of your need according to his riches and glory. That's when a miracle occurs. When God comes and swoops down from the supernatural, intervenes into the natural so that you can have what you need and God gets the glory for it. Pastor, let me get some of that. Earthly equation. You and your wife are arguing. You and your wife don't love each other anymore. You and your wife are not getting along. Earthly Earthly equation, earthly equation. But then you go to a marriage conference. You begin to fast and pray. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the stronghold. And then God intervenes with a heavenly uh, variable, a heavenly a a variable, a heavenly variable. And now you and your wife love each other. You're being a first Peter three and nine man that I'm a likewise ye husbands dwell your wives according to knowledge. And now you are a willing Ephesians 5 25 woman where you submit to your husband that is a miracle got another earthly equation you going to a school you going to college and, and and it's all kind of drama all kind of foolishness happening on campus but all of a sudden God drops you in the mix you are the heavenly variable that God puts that's on that good, campus Pastor, that's and good. now you begin to pray in your heavenly oh you begin to speak in unknown tongues and stuff begins to shift because you have been put on earth to be the miracle you are the chosen one in that situation so what is, what is God saying to us pastor Craig he's letting us know that miracles in this earth can't be things that you figure out come on as a matter of fact miracles cannot be explained some of y'all wonder why did I go to this high school why did I live in this neighborhood why am I driving this car? Why did this car break down? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? And you know what sometimes God says to us, Pastor Craig, mm -hmm. why not you? Why, why not, not you? now? Yes. Why not this? You are the perfect candidate for a miracle. Hallelujah. You, right there. Yeah, you with the, with the weave right there in your hair. Just, you know, you have the little thing on you. That's you. You are the perfect, you with the bald head looking like me. You are the perfect candidate for a miracle. Somebody that, that, that doesn't have the answer. Somebody that's trying to figure it out and you, your back is against the wall. You are the perfect candidate for a miracle. And guess what? The miracle that you're looking for cannot be explained by man. How do you know, Ray Beatty? I'm talking about myself right now. Teach, man. I'm talking about myself, Pastor Craig. Testify, November 30th, testify. 2019. Yeah, it's about 10.30 a.m. on a Saturday morning. I'm on my way to a funeral. Where y'all heard this testimony before. I keep telling it because they overcame by the blood of the Lamb yeah, and the word, word of the testimony. testimony. So I was on my way to a funeral here, right, right over at the Heatherbrook location. And God bless this man. Bless his heart. As Miss, Miss Leona would say, bless his heart. Bless his heart. He didn't mean it. He missed the stop sign. And as he missed the stop sign, we hit T-bone dead on. We hit dead on. 
And if you can see on the screen right there, this is my vehicle. This is, oh, that's my baby. Look at my baby. Just tore up. Tore, and there was a paint car. So paint spilled all over the car. But the first thing I did, the first miracle, I was able to open up the door. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I, oh, y'all missed it. Y'all, you're missing this thing. I opened up the door. The first thing I did was open up the door. That's the first miracle that I was able to open up the door. As a matter of fact, let me tell you the importance and significance of me being able to open up the door. I talked to a, a wreckage a car wreckage guy mm -hmm. that was in the area because they find those, they, they stay in those little areas right. where accidents occur right off their be beltway, right in that area. He said nine times out of ten, 90% of people, they're either airlifted or they're rushed to the emergency room with accidents like that. But he's talking to me, which means I'm out the car. Come on, second somebody. miracle. <laughs> so second miracle. So second miracle. I done stepped out the car. I'm out the car. And I'm just walking around. I'm walking around that tow up vehicle. Look how beat up the car is. The car ended up being totaled. But I'm walking outside the car. I'm lifting my hands. And they asking me, are you all right? The first, the third reason, I'm lifting my hands. That's a miracle. The fact that I can lift my hands. And I had enough sense. I had enough wherewithal. I had enough wisdom to not talk to the people. But I began to talk to my God. I began to lift my hands and give him glory and give him thanks. Because he chose to make me a miracle. He chose to deliver me from that accident and I had to stop and give God glory. I stepped out. Nothing wrong with my body. I went through a little aches and pains but nothing that God couldn't fix. I am a living, walking, breathing miracle and I give all the glory to God and some of y'all out there right now, God has brought you through some things. He's made a way for you. He's, he's done some things that you knew nobody could do but him. This is your time and opportunity on this family day weekend to stop what you're doing right now and give God some glory right now. Give him glory for the valleys that he brought you through, for the mountains he's brought you over. Give him the glory. Hallelujah. There's still some attributes of God that we got, we got, we've made common that we got to get back. My God. And respect on. And that is God is omniscient. Yes. God is omniscient. He's all knowing. He knows it all. But guess what? God wants to live in you. Hmm. And he said that building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, that you can begin to be able to have the mind of Christ. You hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. What am I saying? According to the kingdom definition, that God's sovereign rulership and governing influence of a king, how he impacts his territory with his will, intent, and purpose, how it produces a community of citizens, hmm. miracle working, signs and wonders people, watch this, who reflect the nature of Jesus Christ. Who looks like Jesus, come on. Looks like Jesus, mm -hmm. act like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Watch this, do what Jesus <laughs> did. Miracles, and they reflect the culture of heaven. Can I park right there for about 30 seconds? Sickness is not a part of the culture of heaven. Hallelujah. Being broke is not a part. Of the culture of heaven, if Hallelujah. I could be an old school preacher. Come on, man. Listen, listen, listen. Being depressed and having depression is not the culture of heaven. But when we are perplexed on every side and without despair, persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed, that is the culture of heaven. Being rich. It's the culture of heaven. Being a Psalms 1 man is the culture of heaven. Being a Proverbs 31 woman is the culture of heaven. Being, being a Luke 2 and 42 child is the culture of heaven. We have to express the culture of heaven because that tells people that God is not just omniscient, he's omnipotent. Come on, man. All power. Come on, come on. He's got all power. Omnipotent, he's great. He's omnipotent. <laughs> he's all power. When Jesus came out of the grave, he said, my rock stood on a rock and declared <laughs> that all power is in his hand. Come on, preacher. That rock is Jesus. But watch this. He that is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. And because I'm in Christ, I can overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. We have an all powerful father. But we, these miracle situations, these earthly equations have to happen so that there is a heavenly burial. Hold on there a second. This, um, this, 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 this omnipresent, man. Come on. This, this thing is good to me. He's not, the enemy is not everywhere at the same time. Let, let me talk about this thing. And now unto him. Yes. God. Uh-huh. Who is able to do. Right. Exceedingly. That's Ephesians 3.20. Abund abundantly above all you can ask or think. Only God can do that. That's miracle work in scripture right there. That's it. And see, what we've done, just come on over here with me. We've put God in a box. 
Oh, yes, we box God in. Brother Durrell, we done boxed him in to what we think he can do. Oh, yeah, he fits. He fits. Oh, the God. Oh, yeah, God fit. I'm going to put my trust and I'm going to put my hope. I'm putting my hope. I'm putting my belief. I'm putting my faith That's in this good. box. And see, the problem is we done boxed God into what we think he could do. We get into the scripture. Trust me, y'all. Mm -hmm. I promise you. Mm -hmm. I promise you. We get into the scripture. But the problem with the, come here, Pastor Craig. Problem with the 20, they feel like the 21st century believer, we feel like this box is big enough. Pastor Craig, go on. Just, can you step in there? Can you, come on, Pastor Craig. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, get that leg. You got to have some help to do wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's the problem right there. You trying to fit your belief into a small little box. Pastor Craig can't even get in the box. Oh, but you trying to put God in, in a, a box, box that you can't get yeah, in. Yeah. That's why it says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. Your faith is bigger than this box. Your belief is big. Man, what God is trying to do is bigger than this box. This is your faith. God is way over here. You need to catch up, mustard. Yeah. Catch up, y'all. God is trying to do some things that's already been done in the supernatural realm. He just needs you to catch up to where he is. Somebody type it in the chat right now. I am the chosen one. I am the chosen one. Help me, Holy Ghost, in this Hallelujah. place. Hallelujah. And now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. This is all you think I can do? That's what he's saying. Is in this box, he says, I'm ready to do more. But are you ready to receive more? Hallelujah. Come on. Listen, y'all. In our text, as we get into Luke, I mean, John chapter 5, the... It states that Jesus is returning to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me stick a pin in that. These festivals require all Jewish males to come to Jerusalem. Let me say that one more time. Uh -huh. This festival required all Jewish males to come to Jerusalem. So, so you know what that one means? One more for the Holy say, Ghost. Say, say that one more time, three times. <laughs> These <laughs> festivals required all Jewish males to come to Jerusalem. Sound like the Brothers Only Worship Celebration. That's what it sounds like to me. That's what it sounds like to me. So when it come up in the fall, everybody knows we ain't doing this on our own. No. They did this in the biblical times, and we're map, we a mapping model of what the Bible has already done. That is correct. All right, I just want to Christ make sure. Christ over culture. <laughs> so you got the, the Jewish males, we have the festival... Festival of Passover, Unleavened Bread, the Festival of Harvest. But watch this. These festivals and seasons, a lot of these miracles happened during these times where God was manifesting or tabernacling with men. Mm -hmm. And these festivals, and, and the Festival of Shelter. So let's go back. Signs in the scripture are for identification. I want you to write this. Sign, identification, Jesus is saying, I am he. Wonder is for magnification. You will see. <laughs> and miracles are for intervention. Let me be. <laughs> Say it one more time. Signs sir. are yes. for identification. Yes, I am he. I am the Messiah. Wonders are magnification. You will see. I will be glorified. And miracles are intervention. Let me be. Let me get in it. Let me help you with it. Let me get involved to it. In Jesus' name. And it's at the city of Bethesda. The crowds of sick people. With, this is the verse. Hung around around the pool waiting for redeemed was miracle water. <laughs> what we did is research. We found out that this was a pool. Yes. A hot spring that came up. Hmm. And it really just temporarily dulled the pain. Let me come over here to these people. <laughs> what this did, this was a temporary solution. That when these people jumped in the water, it gave them the sensation of healing. Jesus. But they still went back to being healed because these people kept being at the pool. Jesus. But watch this. Jesus is going to come now and speak spiritual light to this dark place. You need to know that 400 years. Jesus. 400 years from Malachi to Matthew was 400 years of silence. And here comes Jesus breaking through, and he's going to give them Romans chapter 8. The creature waited in expectation for the sons to be manifested. They were waiting for somebody to come to that water and stop giving temporary solutions for a permanent solution. And Jesus came to do that. And that's what happened with Jesus. He was the permanent solution. Watch this. 
John chapter 5, verse 6. And after 38 years, the man's problem had become a way of life. Jesus Pastor Christ. Pastor Beatty going to wear that out. Yeah. <laughs> after 38 years, the man's problem had become a way of life. No one ever helped him. Jesus. They walked Lord by me. the problem. They looked in the problem. They looked around the problem, but nobody ever dealt with the problem. <laughs> and by that time, he had accepted his way of life. For 38 years, you had to learn how to be at the pool, and you had to learn not to go back home. He learned how not to be social. He learned how not to do those things he needed to do. He had accepted this way of life. And Pastor Baby, I want you to tell us, why is that a problem? The problem is our, that you have all these people, first of all, with these issues, I, 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 by the way, I, I went, and Cairo's going to love this. He's watching. Yeah, Cairo, I got Marshall. I got, I got Chase. I got, I, got all, I got Lion King, Dora, this floor. This is Leia's. This is not Cairo's. The devil is alive. <laughs> but you got all these, 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 these little dolls, they, they represent all the people. Come on, Fast Craig, let's lay here. Come on. Let's lay. They, they are laying at the pool for all these years. It lets you know, number one, the spiritual plight of these times help me holy ghost get yes. down here the spiritual plight of these times are so bad that people wait for this water to stir up mm -mm -mm. jesus christ even to the point that when jesus come in they still don't recognize the miracle worker is in the building because they're so used to they're used to their situation some of us are so used to our situation that it don't matter whether or not we can be healed all we know is we're familiar with where we are and if you're going to be the chosen one you're going to be heaven. a satan busting uh, uh kingdom building people of god you got to remember who you are and whose you are who you belong to you got to know that being a part of the kingdom of god you got royalty living on the inside of you you got royalty inside you got royalty in your dna come Hallelujah. on y'all you got some things inside of you that the world didn't give and put inside of you, but you got to recognize it. You got to recognize it. You got to recognize it. So three points that we have to submit to you today as we lay at the pool is you got to realize <laughs> God doesn't need, your, doesn't need your permission, but he does need your participation. That's good. That's good. God don't need your permission in order to heal you. God been wanting to heal you for a long time, Hallelujah. but he needs your partnership. Oh, my God. Mm, 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 he mm. asks the man a question. Do you want to be healed? Which suggests to me that the man could say no and Jesus could possibly walk away. Oh, my God. There's so many things that God wants to do in your life, and you cancel them out by what you think you can't do. That's why we end every service at the village saying we can do not some things, but we can all do things. all things. And we can't do it on our own strength, but we do it through Christ who strengthens us. us. Throw away the excuses. My God. What did Jesus ask him? Do, Do you, you want, want to be healed? Well. Let me ask you. Yeah. Do you want to live better? Jesus. Do you want the kingdom assignment that God has had for you? Don't go to your grave full of what you should have done. I want you to, I want God is asking you through this sermon. He said, is my supernatural power available to you? Do you want to be healed? And that man started making excuses. What's the first thing he said, Pastor Beatty? He says, well, you know, uh, I, I want to, but, you know, it, somebody, one of these little, Dora Dor the Explorer or Chase or Marshall, they always getting in front of me. Listen. You know, Lion King, they, they always getting in front of me. And even when I do get somebody to help me, what, has, what ends up happening, Pastor Craig? They get healed in front of they me. They get healed in front of me. Listen, let me tell you something. If you're expecting people that look like this <laughs> <laughs> to help you. You in a worse condition. Watch this. Jesus had to heal his head before he healed his body. Jesus Christ. He had to heal his mind before he healed his body. And many of us at the pool right now, uh, because we, we've been so debilitated and incapacitated mentally that Jesus had to ask us a question to get us to snap out of it, Pastor Bay. That, that, that question spoke through the annals of time. It spoke through 72 generations. It spoke through all of the 38 years to him, and it hit him right in his stomach and then went at that part where he said, I need somebody to help me. Jesus said, now nah, I got you. Because listen, his honesty is going to bring God's anointing. Last but not least, after you throw away all the excuses, yes. 
This one is in front of me. That one is in front of me. I've been sitting here a long time. I've been like this a long time, and ain't nobody ever helped me. I've been on my own by myself. Yes. But when Jesus asks you a question. Hallelujah. When Jesus says, do you want to be better? Do you want to be whole? Do you want to be delivered from smoking weed? Come on, somebody. Do you want to be delivered from being a sex addict? Come on, somebody. Do you want, let's talk up in here. Do you want to be delivered from spending all your money on what you spend your money on? Come on. Do you want to be delivered? Do you want to be set free? And instead of giving excuses, what you need to do is point three. You need to partner with Christ. You need to become a partner with Christ. So what he ends up doing is Jesus ends up saying to him, if you can put verse eight up right now on that screen, Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat, walk. At that point, I don't know why he was the chosen one. Uh huh. All these other people at the pool he could have chose from. I don't try to explain God stuff that's above my pay grade. Right. But all I know is he chose me I in that do. car accident. All I know yes, is sir. he chose Jamon to heal him 16 yes. years ago. All I know is he's delivered and set. I've seen him make ways out of no ways. And even when, when my, my, my dad died earlier this year, all I know that the miracle was I didn't lose my mind. Come on, somebody. When I lost my dad, when my daddy passed away and left this earth and, and it wasn't, I, I felt like it wasn't his time. The miracle is that he kept me in my right mind. He clothed me in my right He gave me peace. That surpass it all understanding. All I had to do was partner with him and receive it. Thank you, Lord. All I had to do was receive it. So what did God say? God said, Jesus said, stand up. First command. Pick up your mat. My God. And what you were laying on. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Come on, Daryl. What you were laying on. Now I want you to carry. <laughs> the miracle is that what you were laying on, what was making you comfortable, comfortable now, you can carry that thing. You can carry, like Jesus carried his cross. Come on, Pastor Craig. Yes. He carried his cross, despising the shame. Oh, my, looking, looking towards the author and finisher of his faith. Man, he endured some things, and now he's seated at the right hand. He endured, so he, shows us, he showed us the way, so now we can be the chosen people. Hallelujah. Who stand up. I'm talking to you right now, man of God. You know who I'm talking about right now. You've been laying down on some things. God's told you to move on. God's saying, stand up. Stand Woman up. of God, you single right now. You got about five babies. I don't know who I'm talking to out there, but you got some issues that you're dealing with right now, and you laying on your mat. God says, stand, stand up. up. Pick up your mat. There's a person out there. There's, there's a couple out there. Y'all thinking about throwing in the towel. God says, stand up. Stand up. Pick up your marriage. And walk with me and watch me do some things that you ain't even seen done in the past. I'm able to make it better than it was in the past. And I shall do a new thing, hey, God is saying. But you got to partner with him by standing up. Yes. Stand up for your marriage. Yes. Stand up for your education. Some of y'all got denied scholarships. Some of y'all got denied the school that you wanted to go to. You were disappointed by some things from an educational standpoint. God says, stand up. Stand Stand on his word. Pick up your mat Hallelujah. and go back and fill those papers out. God said he got a miracle waiting Jesus, just for you. Just for you. The sign is for identification. The one that's for magnification and the miracles for intervention. As we close this message, we want to let you know that miracles still happened. Let Say me it again. You, miracles, miracles still, still happened. happened. One more time, miracles. Miracles still happen. Partner with God. Understand that he don't want your participation. He don't want your permission, but he wants your participation. Get rid of your excuses. Woo. Get rid of your excuses. And let God be great. You and me, Jesus. Great job, son. What an awesome word. We know that you were blessed just as we were by that awesome word that just was released. Well, again, why are we doing all of this? For us to get a better and a clear understanding of the gifts that is coming to Valley Kingdom Ministries International. 
Well, we're going to ask you to stay tuned for next week for another word. But right now, we want to extend the invitation that if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the book of Romans tells us in Romans 10 uh, that if we shall confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shall be saved. So pray this simple prayer with me. Father, I pray even right now that you touch my heart and save me from my sin. I acknowledge you with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are Savior and Lord. And I receive you today as my Lord, Savior, and King. The great news is that you are now part of the family of God and a part of the kingdom. So again, God bless you. Stay tuned. If you're being blessed by these messages, sow a seed and be a blessing and watch God touch your life. So until next week and another Digging Deep teaching, we want to say, Apostle, still here. Thank you,